Well, today's devotional is for Sunday, February the 21st. The title is Dreams Do Come True. And the scripture reading, I encourage you to read the scriptures, is Genesis 42. As a reminder, my purpose in this video devotional is a recording of the daily devotional commentary that I have already written on this passage, and this is a copy of it in a video format. Now, uh, a little bit of the background for Genesis 42. Uh, Joseph's dreams were coming to pass, the ones that he had in Genesis 37, but we've learned that the path of the favored son of Jacob uh, to the role of a ruler in Egypt had been one of disappointments, challenges, and injustices. Now, he was a little more than 17 years old when his brother sold him to Midianite merchantmen who then sold him as a slave in Egypt. In Egypt, serving as a slave in the home of Potiphar, he was wrongfully accused by his master's wife, and Joseph had found himself a prisoner, forgotten by man, but faithful to God. Nevertheless, the Lord was with Joseph, and that which he did, even as a prisoner, the Lord made it to prosper. Now, I would read Genesis 41, 38 through 57 with this headline, 31-year-old Hebrew becomes second ruler of Egypt. God had providentially worked throughout the highs and lows of Joseph's life. And for 13 years, he had suffered the indignity of being a slave and a prisoner. But when he was 30 years old, God remembered Joseph. And he was dramatically promoted to be the second only to Pharaoh in Egypt. Entrusted by Pharaoh to oversee the preparations for seven years of famine, Joseph went out from the king's presence and he went throughout all the land of Egypt. And for the next seven years, he stored the grain throughout Egypt in its cities, preparing for the day when famine would begin. Pharaoh also gave Joseph a, a wife, as Zanath, the daughter of Potipharah, the priest of On. Now, that would have been a, a privileged position. And so he was already, not by his birth, but by his marriage, put into the elite place of the most powerful ruler in Egypt apart from Pharaoh. Now, before the years of famine began, God blessed Joseph and he had two sons. The firstborn son he named Manasseh, meaning forgetting, for he had forgotten the, the sorrows, the hardships, and the mistreatments of the past. The secondborn son he named Ephraim, which means fruitful, for God had indeed blessed his life. Now, as had been foretold, when the seven years of abundant harvest was passed, the seven years of famine began. And the people in Egypt began crying out to Pharaoh for food. Well, Pharaoh directed Joseph to open the granaries where the food was stored, and he began selling grain to the people. Now, Genesis 42 takes us from Egypt back now to Canaan. And in Genesis 42, we realize that the famine had reached as far as Canaan. Now, Jacob had heard that there was corn in Egypt, and he said to his sons, Why do you look one upon another? Why are you wasting time here? I've heard that there's corn in Egypt. Get up, go down to Egypt, buy us grain, lest we die. Now, the ten sons of Jacob, now, less Benjamin, the youngest, uh, born of Rachel, Joseph's full brother, was not allowed to go to Egypt because I think Jacob realized and even had suspicions that whatever had happened with Joseph and his disappearance, that the brothers had a hand in it. Now Genesis 42 brings us to the long-awaited family reunion. The, the ten brothers arrived in Egypt and providentially they were to stand before Joseph. I'm sure it was incomprehensible to those brothers to believe that he, their brother was even alive, let alone that he was now going to hold the fate of their lives in his hands. The nine years had passed since Joseph was promoted, and he had been setting in store all the extra grain in Egypt. 
Now, when these brothers arrived, Joseph was 39 years old, and they stood in the midst of the crowd. I think it was probably the dress of a Hebrew shepherd that caught Joseph's attention. And he looked into the faces of those shepherds, and he saw there the faces of his brother. Now, the Bible tells us that he began to speak roughly to the brothers, but we know this was through an interpreter. So he, Joseph is speaking in the Egyptian language, and he has an interpreter who is interpreting what he is saying to his brothers. Now, he asked, whence came ye? And they said, from the land of Canaan to buy food. Now, Genesis 42 and verse 8 says that Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew not him. Now, though 22 years had passed, the memories of his childhood dreams rushed over him. And we read in Genesis 42 and verse 9 that Joseph remembered the dreams which he dreamed. And then he accused his brothers, saying, Ye are spies to see the nakedness of the land ye are come. Well, the brothers protested their innocence and then went on and related the, the, in the reply that Benjamin, Joseph's brother, their father were in Canaan and they were well. Now, searching out whether or not his brothers had repented of their sinful ways, Joseph imprisoned the ten brothers. Well, on the third day, he directed that nine of the brothers would return or would remain in prison. One brother would return to Canaan. Well, uh, they uh, tried to prove that they were not the spies, and Joseph then demanded, then bring your brother Benjamin back to Egypt to stand before me. Well, the brothers were overcome with guilt and grief, and Reuben, the oldest brother, rebuked his brothers, now speaking, not realizing that Joseph could understand what they were saying. And the Reuben said to his brothers, Speak I not unto you, saying, Do not sin against the child, speaking of Joseph, and you would not hear. And then he says, Therefore, behold, also the blood, the blood of Joseph is required. You know, the brothers did not know that the ruler who stood before them was Joseph, or that he understood the guilt charge conversation, or even their admission that they had sinned against him. Emotion swept over Joseph, and he turned himself about from them, and he wept, Genesis 42 and verse 24, and then he returned to them and communed or had conversation with them, and took from them Simeon, bound him as a prisoner before their eyes. Then Joseph commanded that the sacks that the brothers had brought with them would be filled with grain, and the money that they had brought to purchase provisions would be returned to the sack. Well, the brothers set out on their journey back to Canaan. Along the way, one of the brothers opened the sack of grain. And he discovered the money that they had brought to purchase grain had been returned to his sack. Well, it seemed that fate had cast its long shadow over their eyes. And they asked one another, What is this that God hath done unto us? Well, the brothers arrived in Canaan without Simeon. He was left in prison. And the brothers shared with their father the rough words of the ruler in Egypt and his demand that Benjamin must return with them if Simeon was to be freed from prison. Well, the brothers, as they each one emptied their sacks of grain, each man discovered his money had been returned. Fear and grief followed the discovery. And Jacob refused to allow Benjamin to return with his brothers to Egypt. Now we're going to leave Jacob today finding his sorrow seemingly overwhelming his faith. Famine would continue another five years in Egypt and in Canaan, and eventually Joseph's brothers would be forced to return to Egypt. However, they would soon learn what Jacob already knew. God is in control. God bless you, my friend. I look forward to joining you tomorrow as we continue and draw near to the conclusion of our study in the book of Genesis. God bless you. Bye-bye.